things that that essentially have to be true. So if we're looking for elementary particle dark matter, like WIMPs, um, what we know is that it has to be a stable particle, because these are thought to be of cosmological origin, so a stable particle. Um, it must not interact with the strong or electromagnetic interaction. Not electromagnetic, that's what makes it dark, doesn't interact with light. And not strong interaction, that's a much stronger than electromagnetic, and it would have uh, consequences that would be uh, easily visible. So, um, and not interacting electromagnetically means neutral. So you look at all the standard model particles, and most of them are not stable. Um, many of them have electric charge, or like the photon, interact by electromagnetism. Um, and it doesn't actually leave anything, <laughs> right? So it's um, just to be the dark matter that we see uh, rules out um, most elementary particles. Um, there are other forms of dark matter that are on the verge of being ruled out um, that, that get around this. For example, atoms are neutral. Um, and if you can find a way to have them avoid emitting electromagnetic radiation, like in something cold, like a Jupiter-like thing, uh, it could be dark matter. But for elementary particles, there really isn't a, a, a known elementary particle that meets these simple requirements. So um, where do we look for WIMPs now? Um, so the standard ways of looking are unchanged. Uh, one way is to try to make them, like at the Large Hadron Collider, and the most popular theory that would predict something that could be WIMP-like was supersymmetry. Supersymmetry is not entirely ruled out, but my understanding is that the theoretical models have to strain a little bit to still allow WIMPs. What's been ruled out is mass ranges that go from, say, a few GeV, uh, GeV over C squared, that is a few times the mass of the proton, up to a few hundred. And so that's where the experiments are the most sensitive. So we look below that and above that. And this, to me, doesn't seem like the most natural WIMP region from long ago. Um, and the couplings we're looking at, the, the uh, interaction strength, are now weaker than the W in WIMP, uh, distinctly weaker than the standard uh, weak interaction. So it's edging outside the original motivation, but that motivation can be stretched a little bit. So it's not ruled out yet. So the old ways of looking are still valid. You try to make them at the LHC. You do indirect searches astronomically. You look for WIMP, anti-WIMP annihilation. And so what you're actually observing is standard particles like gamma rays or X-rays or neutrinos or um, electrons or positrons. So you look for signals in normal matter coming to the Earth that you could argue are resulting from annihilations of WIMP, say, at the center of the galaxy. The problem is lots of things can make standard model particles, and you have to rule all of those out. And that has not been definitively done in any of the many hints uh, in indirect searches. Um, I work on direct searches, which means in the laboratory we build a detector that should be sensitive to the actual interaction of a WIMP passing through the lab. Um, given the gravitational constraints, if you presume a WIMP mass, we know roughly how many go through our lab, because we know roughly how much of the mass of the galaxy is in, is in dark matter. And if you assign a mass to them, you know how many. But the range of possible masses is getting wider, not narrower. And so that's kind of tricky. But I remember that with a kind of 100 GeV WIMP, namely 100 times a proton mass, I think if you cup your hands, there are a few in there at any moment. So um, that's what we're looking for. The interaction is expected to be very weak, and we have to get rid of all the backgrounds. 
But the leading uh, detectors for trying to find this, the most sensitive, are um, liquid noble gas, like xenon or argon in liquid form. Um, and the detector technology is called a time projection chamber. It's kind of a drift chamber like they have in big high energy physics detectors. But it has to be sensitive to the recoil of a single atom after it's been struck by a wimp. And that's what we look for. And the direct searches are pushing um, to masses higher than the LHC can reach, and also to cross sections, interaction strengths that are, are, are very weak, much weaker than the standard weak interactions. And that's the direction we push down in interaction strength and either up or more recently also down in mass, so down to below the mass of a proton or up to the mass of a thousand protons. And those are the, the direct technologies, and those have to be in deep underground labs to shield them from cosmic rays. So dark side is a liquid argon time projection chamber. It is not the most sensitive in the world, but um, argon has some advantages over xenon. Xenon has some advantages. Xenon, which is the world leader, argon uh, through dark side is catching up. And there's another Canadian experiment also coming online. Um, so the issue here is getting rid of background. So background could be anything that either makes an atom move, like a neutron, could scatter off the nucleus of an atom and make the whole atom move. Or a gamma ray from radioactivity could um, eject an electron from an atom, and it could fool you into thinking that it's a whole moving atom. So we have to be able to distinguish those things. And with the current technology, you can distinguish quite well between the signal and the background. So in dark side, we, have a, we surrounded the detector with a neutron detector that's extremely sensitive. So if the neutron interacts in our um, argon, we can catch it in the other detector. And we can distinguish between whether you have a recoiling atom or just an electron because of the pattern of light uh, that is made in argon. It, uh, it's scintillation. It emits light when you have either an atom or electron going through it. And the time signature of those uh, light emission pulses is very different for the two. So we have very good background discrimination, and that allows us to push to rarer and rarer possible uh, WIMP events. And so that's, that's the name of the game, is getting, getting rid of that background. Now at very low masses, where the sensitivity isn't as high right now, um, the background issues are, are, are more serious, and that's why they're not as sensitive but also um, the ability to distinguish background from signal in the laboratory gets very difficult. And so there are many, many very low mass WIMP searches underway now. Um, in fact, we just published uh, the most sensitive one at around a few proton masses. Um, but we really can't tell if something is signal or background. We just have to make it so low that there's almost nothing seen. And so that's the other frontier right now in direct searches. For new proposed experiments, um, a question that I certainly ask is, is this experiment an experiment that could actually find dark matter if it's there, or can it only rule it out in the following sense? If you see a whole bunch of events, uh, they could be WIMPs, but they could be background. And if you can't tell them apart, then you're not going to be able to discover WIMPs. If you see very few events, you may be able to rule out WIMPs that would give a rate higher than that. But if you can't distinguish background, you could never discover it. 